let's talk about The Bachelor. <laughs> let's do it, girl. <laughs> People are very skeptical of the producers in this whole deal. Oh, yeah. And, and they, they should be. <laughs> and they should be. Okay. <laughs> Oh my word. First of all, let's set up how you and I know each other. I was a producer in LA for 14, 15 years. And in that time, Katie and I met, we worked at E! Entertainment together. But then you went to ABC, I went to NBC, you went to ABC, and you hooked up with The Bachelor people. Yes. So how long were you on the show? I was on the show for five years, five and a half years. Okay. Which is, there's like two seasons of it every year, so that's at least 10 seasons. Okay, am I correct in thinking that Juan Pablo was one of your bachelors? Yes, he was one of my bachelors. Okay, so later we're going to find out who your least and most favorite contestant or lead to ever work with were. Okay. So be thinking of that. So now, what is the breakdown of producers? There are segment producers, there are field producers. Are the segment producers setting up the shoots? Well, let's start from the beginning of like ha casting. Okay. Like how casting even works. <laughs> okay, yes, please. <laughs> because casting is really interesting on this show. I mean, so many people apply. I think the casting department does such a great job because they have to go through probably about 10,000 people like each time. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> they narrow it down to about the top 100. And then those top, the top 100 gets flown to LA. As producers, we're in, we go into the, to a, a hotel in Los Angeles and we're in like a kind of a penthouse suite type of situation. And then there's one room set aside for the, um, for an interview. So, and we all take turns as producers to go in and interview the cast member, the potential cast member. And while we're interviewing, the rest of the people are in that back room, like watching the interview, making comments. <laughs> okay. And talking about whether this person is going to be good on the show or not. At that point, do they already know who the lead will be? Yes. Okay. Okay. But the contestants might not. It's not announced yet, usually. Is Chris Harrison in that room? And is Mike Fleiss in that room? Chris Harrison is not in the room. Um, and Mike flies sometimes will go, most likely not though. Do you feel like the producers get a good sense of, of the, these people during their interviews? I mean, they're so, you know, you can be so controlled in an interview and you're crazy might not come out. The producers are really good at getting those interviews, right? They're really great at like, that's what you, you're going in for, right? And you know, because you know, your bosses are sitting out in that other room watching you do this interview. So you better like deliver. <laughs> yeah. You better get, if they're, if they're gonna be crazy, this is the opportunity, right? There's been points where I'm like, okay, so you're, you're, a, you're an exotic dancer, right? Can you do a, a dance, a lap dance for me right now, right? Like if you're a guy sitting across from me and I'm interviewing you, I'm going to say that. I'm going to say like, can you do that lap dance for me right now? Because you want to know that they have that in them. They want to, yes. to do that and they're comfortable yes. doing that. Yes. And I always say it's like, it's, it's you, but kind of on steroids, right? So whatever it is that makes you you, is going to be the amplified version of you on this show. So then what is there a formula? What's the ratio of true potentials to lunatics? The goal is always to actually find a match. Yeah. You know, surprisingly, right? Like a lot of people think it's because it's like, oh, let's just find the craziest, you know, person to get good ratings. But it's actually not because what's genius about Mike Fleiss is that he knows that to, to have people watch, you have to buy into the fantasy. And then to buy into the fantasy, you have to know that, you know, there are potentially great matches for people, mm -hmm. right? The romance still has to be there. If there's just a bunch of crazy people doing crazy things, then it's just more Jersey Shore or you know, some other random reality show. So how much, how much information does the lead give them? Like, I want 
What? what? How many specifics? How many specific? A lot. A lot. A lot. Everything. Okay. Yeah, because you you have to, right? Because you this is your season. That's how. That's the other part of like what makes this show so great, and and why it's still relevant today is that like each person comes with their own thing, right? Like they have their own ideas of who they want in a mate and who they want to have as a life partner, and and then even like who they want, where they want to travel and things that they want to do. Like that's, that's a lot of stuff. And then who their favorite musicians are, those kinds of things, you know, like when Emily Maynard was on, um, her idol basically was like Dolly Parton. And so, and then it was, and I actually got the privilege of, of, you know, trying to get Dolly Parton on the show. And then her people actually said to me, oh, Dolly makes all of her own decisions. She, you know, you have to write a letter to her. We'll give it to her. And then she makes the decision from there. And so I wrote this letter to her. And then based off of my letter, Dolly Parton said yes. And I was like, wow, that's incredible. It's like my words. <laughs> that's so cool. And that convinced her to be on the show. And she wrote a song for the show, too. I did write a song for this very occasion, and I specifically wrote it for the two of you. It's really about people looking oh for my love. God. So it goes like this. So what, what we do is, uh, as producers, in the beginning, we would get a couple of different cast members and we would be their producers through the process. We were assigned three, about three people and get to know them, really get to know them and their story and, you know, for them to know somebody already when they get here is always very comforting for people too. So let's say you're assigned to a loose cannon, someone who you know, maybe <laughs> this person could be a bit of a psychopath. Um, who are you telling that information to? Does every do all the producers come together and go, okay, I got a crazy one, or this guy really has potential, or this girl is out of her mind, or yeah, we don't we don't talk about is that person a really good fit for you know him or her or whatever. We let that unfold naturally. Oh, oh. because that's the one thing you can't predict is like chemistry. Somebody's real chemistry. I, like my first season was with, I don't know if you remember Jake, who was the pilot from Dallas, Jake Pavelka, right? Who did he have in his top three? Top three was, was Vienna, um, Ten Lee. Oh, she was sweet, wasn't she? Yes. So sweet. Yeah. Very sweet. And um, third was Gia one of my favorite people <laughs> who yeah. actually, unfortunately passed away. But, um, but yeah, so, so he had like, I mean, out of the three, like, first of all, we didn't think Vienna was going to go that far, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, I could see that. <laughs> and so that's like, that's when you know it's really real, right? Because like the producers thought, you know, she's going to be fun for a little while on the show, but, but for her to go all the way to the end and for him to pick her at the very end was like, was a shock to all of us. So you get, we know, right? Chemistry wins out most of the time, especially on the Bachelor side. Each producer gets assigned, you know, three or so potential contestants. Does the lead get their own producer? Yes. So that person is just with the bachelor or bachelorette. They don't, they, they don't interact with the other people. Okay. They don't okay. really even know the other people unless they're, you know, they're on the date or whatever. It's in the same, in the same way that the bachelor or bachelorette knows the other people. We don't want to mix that up because then it's like, it's almost like not fair because then that producer could just say, well, I really like so-and-so for you or whatever, so. <laughs> we asked for people if they had any questions. Marin T wants to know, do producers force the villains to stay on the show to make it good TV? I mean, are there times when the lead, go, the lead knows like, okay, this guy's a clown and the producers are like, but you know what? He's kind of making for good TV. Let's, let's keep him on or no? <laughs> No, there's no way to force somebody to keep them, right? Like if, like, let's say I was your, your producer, right? And I, and then you told me, there's no way I don't like this person. What am I going to say? Like, if I said to you, well, this person's really good TV, you should keep them. Like, what would your reaction be? Your reaction is like, you don't care about me. You just care. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> so 
then you just sort of lost all your credibility. So no, they don't, they don't do that. You know, if the person is like, oh, I don't really, you know, I don't care if that person's on here or not, right? Like if that's, that person's not in their radar, like as somebody they don't like at all that they're going to get rid of in the rose ceremony, or it's not really their top five, right? Like of people and you know they still have to fill a certain number then of course they're gonna the the producer can then say well let's keep this person right let's keep this person and this person this person how much information is the lead getting from the producers as a whole about each contestant so they're not really getting much information at no, all no no wow no. that's they're not getting any information. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you know, sometimes, especially like the first night, yeah. they, they don't know anybody at all, right? And so during the rose ceremony, he'll say, okay, he'll call like somebody, you know, this person to, to come up yeah. and get the rose and then another person to come up and get the rose. And there's a specific order. And we do that because of cameras, right? And you know that with, Whitney doing right. what you're doing. It's like, we need to know the order so that the director can call the camera shots. Right. So we give him that order. <laughs> so every, so the first night or the, for the rest of the season? The whole, the whole season. So the, okay, the, good. So that makes perfect sense to me. Done that way. Yeah. Yes. So in my brain, not, that's how it has to be because you also want to build up the suspense. You know what's going on as a producer. You don't want the villain or the one who's causing problems to be the first one called because that's not suspenseful. Okay, so the producers are definitely deciding who gets called when for the rose ceremonies. Yes. That right there, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> and then are there supervising producers like back in a control room kind of watching everything that's happening, taking notes? Well, there's a whole story department. So that they're mostly the ones that are taking notes. Oh. Back in the control room. This is a new element uh, we were just introduced to. Okay, so the story department then is interweaving all of these. So the story department actually knows what's going on between each different, yeah. they, they speak, they know everything. They know everything. They, they have to know everything because they're the ones that are eventually are going to be working in post to put it all together. Got yeah. it, so they're the so ones. They yeah, they're, they're the taking guys. notes. So none of the other, like everybody else who's like in the field, like you're on the floor, you're working with, you're there with the contestants. You just don't see us because we're usually behind the cameras. So we kind of have this running joke where when you go in the mansion, it's nighttime and you come out, it's morning. How long are <laughs> these rose ceremonies and like these cocktail parties? It seems like they're all night. Um, that first night, is all night it's it's a really it's grueling especially for us as producers right like we were we basically work probably a 27 hour day because you're starting the day kind of early you're going into each person's room to film them getting ready you're also doing interviews with them ahead of time and there's so many of them right like there's usually about 30 and then it's the limo right like you're getting into limos and you know and then that whole limo ride like there's at least one one of us one producer in each limo and our job is to really help make sure they're kind of remembering what they're even going to say because in that moment you're going to freeze once you like get out of the limo because the limo it's like pretty daunting first of all it's that that bachelor mansion which is so famous right. and then se second of all it's like lights everywhere then there's the bachelor and chris harrison standing there you know it's just very surreal right so whatever you were planning on saying unless you want to look like an idiot right like and just say nothing uh, <laughs> like, we're there to like try to hopefully help you to not have that moment because nobody wants that moment to be their moment their first impression anyway if they are choosing exactly what they want and you said they choose what type of date. So are these group dates and things their idea? Well, not the group dates are never their idea because <laughs> who really wants to go on a group date? <laughs> True. <laughs> but there are things it's based off of a lot of the things that they either 
like doing or maybe it's something where and this this brings me back to even Jake's season and stuff but like maybe they're afraid of doing something too it's scientifically proven that if you do something really scary with somebody that like like it's something that you've never you think you can never do and then you do that with that other person and they have the same feelings that that's going to bond you much faster colton <laughs> and taisha taisha jumping out of the plane that's why they're always jumping off of things and this is a big one are you ready for it <laughs> what ready. actually happens in the fantasy suites mm, that's a good question okay so we don't know 100% because because we don't have cameras in it, right? Like we don't, we definitely do not do that. It's a really big opportunity for them to truly get to know each other away from the cameras to see if like all of it is more real than they can. You know, it's just a great last minute opportunity for yeah. whomever may be proposing to say like, okay, so the cameras are off, we're by ourselves, how is, how is this person the same or different? And what is our chemistry like? And how, how can we kind of take it to, to another level? And whether that includes sex or not, that's really up to them. A lot of them surprisingly, prob no, well, I don't know if it's surprising, but a lot of them actually don't. How much time do they actually get together? Like what time is the, the crew back in their face in the morning? They get all, all night, basically. I mean, they get a lot, a lot of time. Like after dinner, like, you know, we do a dinner on, on camera, of course. And then after dinner, we film them going to, into the room, right? Closing the doors on us. And then, um, then they have, yeah, until morning, you know, let's say, I don't know, 10 a.m. Okay. Oh, do you know the hero or heroine that came up with the should you choose to forego your own room that line it's like my favorite line <laughs> ever um that might have that might be a chris harrison you think term yeah that that okay. could be a bit very well be a chris harrison term well while they're on that date though they're not going to be eating a single bite of food so what's going on there <laughs> I love when people ask me about the food. <laughs> it's very concerning. <laughs> when do they eat? Um, there's usually a little bit of a break while we're setting up cameras and all those things where they can eat. Because most of them don't want to eat, right? Like you don't want, like it's very awkward to be on camera eating and <laughs> drinking. Like if you're stuffing your face like on camera, it just... It's, I don't know, it just, I, nobody wants to do that. So are they separated? Like they're having a date and then they kind of go their separate ways or can they still converse? Well, when they're getting ready, let's say during the time when they're getting ready, right? When they're getting ready, they're separated, right? So like they'll go off with their producers and then they'll get ready separately. And then while they're getting re ready separately, they probably will eat during that time. Am I right in thinking the food that's actually on set is just, it's been sitting there for a while. It's probably cold and disgusting anyway. It just looks good. It depends. It depends, right? Like sometimes yes, but actually a lot of times no, because a lot of times where they are, it just depends on where they are. When we shot in Croatia and they were, you know, sitting in like where, like that cave where Game of Thrones was shot. No, like that, that food is disgusting and cold for sure. <laughs> but if, if we're in a location, um, let's say, I think when we were in Anguilla, we had like, we shot on this like, kind of a beachside restaurant place, but it's, but because it's a restaurant, they want to make sure that it's really good you know, because the restaurant is putting like their stamp on it. So they will make it like hot and fresh and it'll come out like right at the last minute and all those kinds of things, you know. And then of course the art department comes in and sort of zhuzhes it up. Does, yeah, zhuzhes it up and makes it look even better. So. And then does the crew eat it afterwards? 
Uh, sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes, yeah. But they not, should. But, but not not the ones that are sitting in front of them because that by then will be cold because they've been yeah. talking for like two hours. <laughs> okay, a little teased question here. Who is your favorite and your least favorite person, whether it be a lead or a contestant or whatever? Let's start with favorite. Let me just do two. I'm going to do both Bachelor and Bachelorette. So favorite Bachelor is Sean Lowe. Yes. yes. Yeah. yeah, I love him and I love his family. He and Catherine are just, they're really real. They really, um, they have great chemistry together great you know they're just great honest people and then they come from i mean his family couldn't be like the more perfect all-american like yeah. lovable family <laughs> okay bachelorette that's a that's a, this one's a trickier one because um i'm actually facebook friends with a couple of them so uh, i don't want to hurt anyone's feelings <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> But I want to say I do. I love um, I love Emily. I love um, Ashley. I also really like Allie too. I mean, the the women to me are very strong. You know, Allie worked at Facebook. Ashley was a, a is still a dentist. You know, and um, and Ashley like she you know she's still with JP like how can you not love that right and they have two two kids and you know they're just yeah they're awesome they're awesome together i also went to their their wedding and and went to Sean and Catherine's wedding as guests which was always fun like not to have to work but to be invited as guests yeah like a really yeah like a really special thing for me so who was your least favorite um ooh Mm. Whoa, that was a lot. <laughs> so much good stuff. That was part one of our interview. Part two has even more bombshells. Oh my gosh, I know my favorite part was wondering what the guys do on their downtime or the women what they do. Yes, exactly, when they're not filming. Yes, mm -hmm. she answered that. We also found out how Reality Steve gets his information and what they do when the lead chooses who they love after two weeks. How then do you carry on an entire show? So we'll have all of that for you in part two and we will post that soon.